this is Monday night, TSMD TV, where every single Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, we discuss various ways for you to optimize your looks, love, wealth, and health. And tonight, we're going to talk about health. What is this genetic testing stuff? Well, what is this? What is this? Is this just another scam? And on that same message, what is a functional medicine, allopathic medicine, um, in a <laughs> Mr. Hartley said he tried to read my lips. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much. And you, you can't read these lips. Uh, look, let me tell you, because I'll be going a thousand miles per hour. If you read my lips, there's a trick to it. So, but um, I was talking about like functional medicine, integrative medicine, holistic medicine, naturopathic medicine, a chiropractor, or, um, oh, telemedicine, telehealth. What's, what's the difference between telehealth and telemedicine virtual? Um, I'll talk on my cell phone or do I need insurance? What is going on? By the end of this broadcast, I plan to shed the light for you on some of those areas of confusion, i.e. number one, what is personalized medicine? Number two, what is functional medicine? Number three, genetic testing. Does this stuff work? Now, this is going to be my subjective answer. And the reason why I say that is because um, it all depends. You know, some doctors look at things from a different perspective. I consider myself to be a pretty neutral person. I, I, I have no bias. I, I give credit um, where credit is due. Speaking of credit, guys, I'm just going to give like three seconds of shout outs in the beginning for people who are helping the good doctor. Now, backstory, how do we end up on this page? I basically left the hospital for a period of time because of my mother's illness. And I decided to establish a medical practice online. I don't have any IT. Now, I, I'm older than 18, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I ain't no millennial, okay? This computer stuff is not easy. But there are some entities that I have subscribed to that literally have made me feel like they're my IT partners. First shout out, I want to give Constant Contact. I called them. They have stayed on the phone with me for as long as four hours. The second shout out, JotForm. I have never seen a chat situation that you ask them a question and bam, they're right on it. Um, who else helped me really quickly today? Oh, Calendly. And, and, and so... If you do have software, take advantage of those support and they are readily available. Thank you so much. The question we had today was integration because like we have it where um, I had the forms where you guys could fill out the forms, but we saw there was a disconnect in the automation because I wasn't getting the forms and all those entities were right on board. Zoop! Forget about the commercial, back to the message at hand. Medicine, medicine, medicine. As it stands right now, Allopathic medicine is your main MD. That's the main person who you used to have a relationship with when you used to have your personal primary care doctor. Along the years, that relationship has gotten a little bit strange because people started to go to urgent care. And then there's some people that just use the emergency room as their urgent care and primary care doctor, which you should not do because they don't know your background. They don't know your history. With regard to myself, I'm a warm and fuzzy type of doctor i i want i want to know because there's if you come in depressed it's not just you just came in depressed we got eight minutes let's just give you a pill see you later what led you to that point what happened in your childhood the human being is much deeper than what just presents when you walk in the door a lot of times you require at least about a 45 minute assessment it has been proven that it takes the average patient about 20 minutes before they tell you why they really came right so the patient has to be relaxed and you have to be relaxed with today's healthcare being as it is which is insurance based they they don't have time they, and, and that doesn't mean for you you are important you are not the thing that's causing the bottleneck there's um when you go to an insurance based physician they have to see a certain number of people within a certain period of time period and they have to finish their documentation they have to enter all the labs all the orders talk to pharmacy talk to the nurse they may have a question so on and so on and then that's it their hands are tied if it was up to them 
they would spend as long with you as you wanted. But unfortunately, in the insurance modality, it's not really up to them. So I do membership because it's easier for me. I could send you guys a email randomly or I could talk to you for an hour if I want to because you just pay a membership. It's not necessarily like the concierge, even though the name of my virtual practice is virtual concierge MD, it's not necessarily like that. I, it's just like a membership, just a monthly thing. And I do that because I, I don't want to feel pressured. I don't want to feel rushed. If I'm reading an article and if I feel like it can help you, I want to be able to send you a chat and be like, hey, Mr. Hartley, I know last time you and I spoke and you shared with me concern about blah, blah, blah. Maybe this article can help. I like that. That, that, that makes me feel good. So the first thing that I want to hit on is personalized medicine. Then we will talk about the other two, which are functional medicine and is genetic testing another healthcare scam. Personalized medicine is looking at you as a individual when it comes down to your pathology. So if Mr. Hartley were to come in and if he were to say, you know, uh, I am of XYZ age um, and uh, gender and I've been feeling tired, um, out of energy, um, I don't have to get up and go as I used to, I have a loss of appetite, you know, my hair is losing my hair a little bit, uh, I'm not as productive at work, uh, really can't comprehend things like I, like I normally can, blah, blah, blah. So those are his, as an individual, symptoms. Now, what all is contributory to those symptoms? I can't just go to the shelf and pull off a medication and be like, whoop, based on those symptoms, here you go. Get better and uh, check back with me in a couple of weeks. <laughs> it, really? I mean, now, that kind of like really doesn't make much sense because in the fact that he's an individual. Now, sometimes, you know, people do get better, right? But sometimes it's it's like um, maybe just um, putting a Band-Aid on the sore. And it's like, well, you know... <laughs> I'm not really better, but I'm sleeping a lot better. And then when I wake up, I'm depressed again still. But, you know, that medicine really helped me sleep. But that wasn't the problem that he came in with. He came in with all of those different symptoms. So here's the thing, guys. Myself, too. I'm a human, too. We're all, I'm not an android. I know. <laughs> I'm not AI. I'm a human. So there are multiple factors that must be taken into consideration when we walk in with any kind of symptom. Let me tell you some of those factors your family history. Number two, your um, socioeconomic status. So if you are of uh, socioeconomic status where you really don't have access to some of the healthier foods, um, you don't have access to certain um, gyms or certain equipment, you eat food on the run as opposed to maybe eating more so organically, so your diet. This is going to make a difference. Also, your environment, that makes a difference. Do you live in an environment where there's a lot of um, smoke chimneys? Uh, do you live by a railroad? Do you live somewhere where there could be a possible increased amount of toxins? That makes a difference. When we are born, we are born as individuals and we are born with a certain DNA makeup. Over the course of our life, different external factors can change the baseline of your DNA. So it would be very difficult for us to just give a overall diagnosis to an individual. How can we treat the person a little bit better? So just first discussing personalized medicine, let's go through everything with regards to you. Let's go through your childhood immunizations. How many kids do you have? Do you live with your kids? Are you divorced? How many relationships have you been in? Has anyone else in your family been depressed? What are you doing tonight? How do you feel about that? Do you like the way your hair looks? Do you like the color of your hair? Have you wanted to cut your... That's personal. That is getting into you as a person. By the end of filling out this one form, I, which I have a ton of them, and most of them I've made myself. And a lot of them I've gotten from the Institute of Functional Medicine, which I'm a fellow. But these things get down and ask you questions that you're like, I hadn't even thought about that. Huh, I don't know. Darling, can you help me with this questionnaire? It gets there, it gets there. And it's HIPAA, it's not going anywhere. 
and it, it, it helps us to take better care of you because these forms are 100% you, everything, your exercise, your sleep pattern. Do you sleep six hours, eight hours? What time do you go to bed? What time do you eat? How many times a day do you eat? How long do you exercise? Were you an athlete in college, in high school? All these must be taken into consideration when it comes down to managing you as a individual. So personalized medicine, at least in my practice, means just that I have 24-7 uh, telephone access. There's I email back and forth all day with my patients. I chat, I go and I talk to them on social media platforms. That's personal. Now, um, Unfortunately, every doctor cannot offer that type of a service. And I respect that because they may have chose managed care. That's what a lot of you guys are used to. I go to see my doctor and by the time he walks in, he's walking out. It looks like the door is a turnstile. That, that's not his fault. That That's the system of medicine that he's working in. I, I can't speak for everyone, but I would like to speak for everyone. We all took the same oath. Your doctors, your providers, they love you. But based on the constraints of their place of employment, some can spend more time and some can't. So don't like um, compare doctor to doctor because they all have a different backstory. So that's speaking in regards to personalized medicine, which kind of like overlaps the second thing that we're going to talk about, which is functional medicine. Like you guys, I've shared with you that I'm studying for my certification as a personal trainer. Let me tell you, I had no, I'm, 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 I'm being honest. I'm being honest, Mr. Harley. I'm being honest. I had no idea. Honestly, I mean, I say it all the time, but I had no idea how huge of an effect exercise really plays. Look, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like, okay, one section we were discussing, uh, I think last week, was discussing the musculoskeletal system and how the muscle system, the skeletal system, and the nerve, the nervous system, all rely on each other, okay? So if you do something like, if I was to reach for my water, okay, I actually got a neurological transmission that I'm thirsty, Okay, so that was my nerves. And then my it, it, there was a synapse. I'm not even going to get all off into the physiology and biophysics, but there was a synapse and that gave me the chance to do a reflex and motion using my muscles and my skeletal system for the water. And and this is all complex, complicated. This is this isn't just oh, I was thirsty so I just uh, no. It is and so basically by having exercise, it allows all those functions to work properly. Because if they, if we do not exercise some of those muscles, a lot of muscles are encased. Uh, there's like a, a little film over the top of the muscle, and it's called fascia. Over the fascia, there's actually how's the fascia gonna like slide, plas, and glide? It's like a little bitty liquidy fluid. Okay, so if we're not moving those muscles, what's sliding over that fascia? So is that muscle even moving? If you had an idea of how limited you move your muscles, if you go to work, you sit down in a chair eight to 10 hours, you make it up, go to the bathroom, go to lunch, then you get up from that chair, walk to your car, sit down again, sit while you're driving about 45 minutes, and then you walk from your car, walk home, and you sit down on the couch, and you think about how tired you were from sitting all day. You hear me? And then you spend the other time lying horizontally about six to eight hours a day. So how often do you really move? And well, I'm not even going to go into the chapter that explained how exercise helps to lower your glucose. But guys, it's, it's bigger than you think. Look, it's to the point that I'm realizing exercise is so important to me, ex just to me, subjective to me. Exercise is right up on the scale of swallowing or breathing. 
it makes a huge difference. And I'm not really sure how it became optional. Or I ain't got time to go to the gym. <laughs> or I just, I just, I, I read it. To say you don't have time to exercise is almost to say you don't have time to live. But I'm going to get off my soapbox with that. But I'm just simply saying that functional medicine really, really, really brings that home the importance of exercise and diet. Looking at the comfort level that we have with like processed foods and how the preservatives and how long it stays in your cute little delicate little organs that are depending on you, your intestines and your kidneys and your spleen, they're depending on you to come through with, with, with something healthy. Functional medicine makes a big deal of all those different things and your mind. Oh, let me just pause for one second. You have a neurological system in your stomach, in your gut. The gut is considered like the second brain. There's actually a neurological communication between your gut and your brain, gut brain access. What you eat makes a difference about what you think, how you think. Can you, mem can you remember things? Can you have thought, clarity of thought? emotions, anxiety, depression. Look, let me tell you, we want to cure anxiety and depression. I throw the Xanax out the window, throw the benzos out the window, clean up your diet. It's, 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 it's incredible guys. It's, it's incredible. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm just so passionate about this because I just see such an opportunity to help so many people. If we could just get the message through the importance of diet and exercise, but and that's why I'm so passionate about functional medicine. I feel like I'm just in such a space that we can really make a difference. So functional medicine, we look at diet and exercise and health as a cure, as opposed to a uh, pill or a medical procedure. For example, as an allopathic physician, as an MD, if I have someone who comes into the hospital who has kidney stones, they're having a lot of pain. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to address the pain and then we're going to do some kind of an image to try to see the size of the stone uh, to see if it's going to pass on its own or do we need to set them up with lithotripsy. And then we get them a bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch and bunch of IV fluids. We almost blow them up like Michelin man because we want to get, have them to go ahead and get rid of that stone. Yes, Mr. Hartley. Yep. Stop exercising and you will eventually, he, he, he said it. So, you know, when they say keep the body, you know, I, Mr. Harley, I think that the problem is some things that actually move the needle have been stated as cliches and, and oh, keep the body moving. You know, uh, you're, you're young, you know, um, don't, I, I, the, no, it's not a cliche. It's not a bumper sticker. It's not, it's not, it's not. And I, you know, what I will do is I, I do have, an opportunity where I could probably uh, stand on the soapbox and talk about exercise. So I'll probably do that next Monday because look, looks, love, wealth, and health. Yeah, we'll talk about exercise <laughs> next Monday. So I will because I, I really want to bring that. I really want to. I really want to beat the drum about that, guys. And 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 then here's the thing, it, it's not a lot. Like yesterday, I went live with um, my TikTok fam, and it, we just did like a stretch, and and I was watching a YouTube video. And then they tuned in and, and they were watching the YouTube video. I like Zeus on Zeus Fitness. I like it because I can keep up with him. <laughs> and, and, and we just did it. And we all were talking about how we felt so much better. And it was on TikTok Live, right? Just 30 minutes a day. Uh, you don't have to go to a gym. You don't even have to live in a home. You can live in a studio. You can live in a studio with 27 other people. Just as long as you got about a two by two that you can lift your knees up, you're fine. You got enough space. Okay. All right. So yeah, but we'll talk about that next time. But so functional medicine, it pretty much, so, oh, I was given the analogy. Aha. Aha. You thought I didn't know where I left off. I was talking about kidney stones. So at the hospital, then I would just give you a bunch of fluids, bunch of fluids. And then I would give you like a little sifter thing. And I come in there. Did you pass stone? Did you, did you look, did you see it? Did you pass the stone? Did you pass the stone? Okay. So what does this really do? <laughs> or it helps to pass that stone, but I just may get another one. And what was the etiology of your kidney stone? What was it made of? Was it calcium? Was it a pigmented stone? 
what is it um what is the other um so there are different things that your kidney stones could be could be made of all right so we help you with that stone but you know a lot of times kidney stones are not going to stop after that one stone right that's why they call kidney stones right <laughs> and a lot of times kidney stones sometimes are hereditary so but guess how they guess how they treat it in functional medicine they change your diet who knew who would have figured <laughs> one of the remedies is an oxalate diet so not only does that address the immediate stone but that could decrease the probability of you having additional stones now if you guys have heard of coffee enema functional medicine um and it does the same thing it stimulates your GI system, right? What does coffee do? How many times have you had coffee and been like, excuse me, I have to, <laughs> right? So there's so many things that are done in functional medicine where they, you rely on your body to treat the body or you rely on a change of diet to treat the body or you rely on exercise to treat the body and you get clarity of thought, you can lose weight quicker. So. Functional medicine more so includes a holistic point of view, including your mind, your body, and your overall wellness. Now, that is, I'm not even going to talk about the difference between functional and integrative. That that line does get a little bit blurred um, because us functional medicine docs and integrated medicine doctors, we commonly work together. So um, I'll say that. For another video uh thoroughly discussing the difference between functional medicine and integrative medicine but i just discussed personalized medicine and i just gave you guys a spill of functionalized medicine now what about the topic of the hour is genetic testing a scam how does this make any sense that you could just like go and i, I just take a swab for the inside of my mouth and then i send it to you by mail and you're going to tell me everything about myself how does that even make any sense because it does that's how so what i'm going to do is i have a little um shared screen here okay mr harley let me know if we can hear this okay and i do have permission from um the company that i work with to use this video here we go did you know you can get access to your body can, can you hear it mr hartley code? and use it to personalize every health decision you make. From food and supplement choices to exercise, meal timing, stress management, and more, your DNA can tell you exactly what your body needs to be as healthy as it can be so you can live a longer and better life. For too long, most people have been making health decisions based on generalized recommendations without ever truly understanding their body's unique needs. Guessing, wishing, and waiting for something, anything to work. Sound familiar? You're not alone. If you're feeling frustrated and you're not sure what to believe anymore, we get it. At 3x4 Genetics, we believe your health is too important for a one-size-fits-all approach. We've built a tool that uses genetic testing, one of the most impactful technologies there is, to help you understand your body and take control of your health once and for all. Whether you want more energy, less pain, balanced hormones, faster weight loss, better sports performance, or clearer answers about a confusing chronic condition that's been worrying you, 3x4 Genetics can give you the information you need to take control of your health. What makes 3x4 different? Number one, rooted in science. Our tests are based on 20 plus years of scientific research and clinical practice. Where other test providers look at individual genes, 3x4 takes a holistic view and considers how genes work together in cellular pathways to impact overall health. Number two, practitioner guided. Genetics is complex. You shouldn't be left alone to understand your genes. Our highly trained practitioner partners will work with you to translate your results into an actionable, realistic plan. Number three, actionable insights in order of importance. The 3x4 Blueprint Report uses infographics, explanations, and actionable recommendations that are prioritized into the top three suggestions for nutrition, supplements, and lifestyle changes for each of your most genetically impactful pathways. 
hence the name 3x4, making it simple to know where to start and how to prioritize meaningful lifestyle changes. Here's how to get started. 1. Ask your 3x4 genetics practitioner to order a test for you today. We'll ship it directly to your home. 2. Collect your sample and register your kit within seconds, then send it to the lab in the provided pre-labeled shipping container. 3. After 3 to 4 weeks, your report will be ready. You'll have your eye-opening one-on-one consultation with your practitioner and receive your personalized, actionable health plan full of recommendations for nutrition, supplements, movement, and more based on your own DNA. If you're ready to start making personalized decisions for your health, order your 3X4 genetics test today. So, um, from my objective and subjective opinion yes genetic testing does work it is absolutely um this is the future of medicine and it makes sense if you think about it i mean you are the individual and there's more to you than just a cookie cutter type situation and what i love about this is it's not expensive it's realistically priced and in my opinion the cost paid is well worth it because you will finally get a chance like um one of the because we have this community and it's so amazing it's it's i love it i look i I love these people and i stumbled on these people like i'm not even i don't want this video to be long but when i tell you this was a godsend Okay, I just gotta tell you this part. Look, I had like 40,000 emails built up unread because I meant my my schedule, right? So instead of just doing a big select all and delete, (laughs) I decided to read each and every one. I had emails going back to 2018. So I think I actually got an email from this company like around 2019 and it wasn't directly from them. It was from another it was from my electronic health record company. And I was like, ooh, what's this? Ooh, click, click. I don't even know what made me click. And if I had have saw this email back when I first received it, I wouldn't have had the medical maturity to appreciate it. Because at that time, I think I was doing aesthetics, right? I was just doing aesthetics, hormones, weight loss. So I really wasn't looking at like genetic testing, but I was like, oh my God, she comes in more frequently for filler touch-ups and then as the patients sit there they tell you about their family like oh well she has lupus in her family and that's how i ended up wanting to do personalized medicine because i i didn't feel like i was giving you a complete picture by just injecting you and just sending you out the door because we haven't really fixed the problem that led you to come in in the first place so i i, I had like the desire but i don't think i was quite down this lane now i'm in this lane So I found this and when I looked at the video and I started reading the literature, evidence-based medicine that confirms it worked. Go look it up, go look it up. Any journal, this is everywhere. Nutrigenomics, nutrigenomics, epigenetics, looking at the function of your mitochondria, looking at the function of the mitochondria in the muscles. Medicine is going in a direction, people, let me tell you. And I have never been more happy to have a master's in physiology and biophysics because i was reading one section and i swear to god it felt like my surroundings had turned into my lab but and and it was amazing i even called my mentor dr john solero university of illinois college of medicine and physics i was like that's solero i just read this section and when i shared with him what i was going over he was like tess this is a big deal because you know we're working on it, so I'm, I'm letting you guys know the motors are moving. The motors are moving. Um, nutrigenomics is real. Okay. As a matter of fact, they even have a um, branch off of this in dermatology. It's called dermatogenetics. Why do you have the skin that you have? Is your acne treated the same way as the other 37 people who are sitting in the lobby? with acne no it isn't and so this is moving so if you like it or not 
<laughs> this is how it is. So now if you go to your primary care doctor and if you took my video and if you're like, doc, I want this, respecting your primary care doctor, this is another level of learning. During the pandemic, I have enrolled in a fellowship in functional medicine. I've started studying to take my certification as a personal trainer, and I'm sitting for the obesity medical boards. I work for myself. I do local medicine. I do travel medicine. I took time off from the hospital to take care of my mom. So I could, most doctors don't have this kind of time. Okay. So don't, you know, be upset with your primary. If you're primary like, huh? What? <laughs> They're, they just haven't got to it yet, but I bet your primary will say, well, listen, I don't know. However, I'll go research it or I'll help you to talk to a doctor who does know about that. So, right. So, I mean, let's just say the playing ground of medicine is not even, but everyone does care and everyone does love you. So don't, don't, do not, you know, feel like your doctor isn't down for you because they are. It's just different out here. All right. So that's it. So my answer to my initial question, absolutely not. This is not a healthcare scam. This is not a hoax. This is not something else to get you guys excited just to be let down. This is real. This is here and it's available to you. Now, I work with 3X4 Genetics. I'm sure there may be some other companies. I cannot endorse them. I can endorse this company. And um, and some of the things that we do. We, I think we're all the way into South Africa. Now, we don't know everything. We have a community. Right now, I could go, I could go on my forum right now. And we're chatting all night, all day. Because of the different time zones. Yes. So, um, this is actually... Uh, the, okay. So this is actually the, um, the website and basically uh, I'm already a part of this network and it just like, if a doctor, like, let's say you're a doctor, let's say you went to your doctor and you're like, look, doc, I've been with you for a hundred thousand years. And there may be some other doctors who know about this, but I want you to know about it. You, <laughs> you to know about it. Your doctor is more than welcome to come to this site and become a member. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything. So it's not like, you know, this is a tuition or something. You got to go take out a student loan. And it's just something that they could watch instead of a YouTube video. So yes, your provider. And um, I don't think you have to be an MD because uh, I think there are some dietitians. As a matter of fact, there are some people in my um, Instagram community that are doctors and I invite them and they've joined for free and they're just like absorbing the content. So even, well, I don't know if you can, but I, yeah, I know that a practitioner can, a nurse practitioner, registered dietitian can be a part of this community. And it just talks about how, so what I like about it, going back to the original, I wanted to set something up where I could spend time at home with my mother. She has Alzheimer's and I did not want her with a nurse or anyone. I didn't want to take the chance of anyone not treating my mother the way I wanted her treated. I could do this all night and all day. I could have this on up top and y'all don't have to know what I, I can have on my jammies, <laughs> my onesie at the bottom. It doesn't matter as long as my brain is in check, right? Because you're going to get the kit mailed to you. I'm not going to do the swab. And then you're going to mail the kit to the lab. All I got to do is be here for you. And I could be here for you on my cell phone, or I could be here for you on my laptop. I love it. So what did I do? I was like, I want to be able to offer optimal care. I'm talking about above the baseline care to the point that you're like, Wow, 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 wow. So I spent months researching the best virtual um, care that I could offer you guys. And I found it. And to top it off, Mr. Harley, you're going to love this. Now, this is a new discovery I just made. I was like, if they're on my weight loss program, how do I know they're really weighing themselves? How do I know? Hmm. 
how do I know what the number really says? Or if they have diabetes and we're working to get them off their diabetes medicine, how do I really know what their sugar is? Hmm. Or if they're on blood pressure medicine and we're working to get them off their blood pressure. So let's talk about blood pressure medicine. If when you were born and when you were in a hospital and when they spanked your little naked booty and they cut the umbilical cord, they didn't say to your mother, congratulations, Mrs. Jones. It's a girl, it's a boy. And she has hypertension. No, that's not what they said, right? So it's a very good possibility that is a acquired chronic medical condition, which means that if it was acquired, we could get it unacquired, right? So, but how do I know if you're doing what I'm recommending to get you off that blood pressure medicine? Hmm. So I thought, I thought, I thought, Mr. Hardy, I was like, how am I going to do this? So along with the membership, you get home remote monitoring devices. <laughs> I'm nosy. That way I keep an eye on you. You get a scale, a blood pressure cuff, and a glucometer. So all I got to do is just I ask you to put it on your arm. And whatever number comes up, I see it. I, I don't have to worry about the numbers being fudged. So that goes back to personalized medicine. That is something else that I offer in my membership. So I'm excited about genetic testing. Um, 23andMe, I've never used them. Um, so big ups, big respect for that company. I, I have nothing to say yay or nay. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm friendly for everyone. I, I wish everyone um, a good fortune with whatever their endeavor is. But 3X Genetics, I endorse. And a few other things I endorse. Can you have optimized healthcare at home? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And um, I think you just need to. Uh, oh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Man, look, you know, um, I, I like I said, my little Edwin is the one who challenged me. And um, he kind of got the car rolling down the hill. And now that I'm here on Monday night, my desire is to bring you guys information that at the end of our broadcast, you can get up and you can go implement. And um, I, I just hope that this moves the needle for any of you. So if, if anyone has depression and you go or no, here's here's a better one. Um, you have hypothyroidism. You go to your doctor. You're like, doctor, I have hypothyroidism. They put you on an antidepressant. <laughs> I'm confused. I said thyroid. I didn't say, right? Maybe it's not your thyroid. Maybe it's something else. Genetic testing will help you to answer that question. Check this out. There was one scenario where um, it was determined that a patient was prone to Alzheimer's. If you are not compliant with the recommendations. So in other words, you are close to the ledge and you possibly could fall off and you get a set of instructions to back you up from the ledge. If you're like, forget about those instructions, small ructions, oh, then you're going to still go fall off the ledge. But here's the thing. You knew and you still did it. And if you have an annoying doctor like me, I'm not going to let you because I'm going to be like, did you? You could have the best plan, but if the patient ain't on board, the plan is worthless. So this could be the best answer. But if you have not determined that you are ready for a lifestyle modification. Yeah, it's a waste of your time. It's a waste of your money. Don't do it. Don't try it. That's all I got to say on that topic. Oh, one more thing I do have to say. Did you hit the thumbs up? Did you like it? Did you like it? Uh-huh. You want to subscribe? Just push that subscribe button. Don't forget to push the bell because you want to be notified. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna try to like um go live a little bit more often. Maybe during the week. Maybe kind of bump on and say how y'all doing, what you guys up to. You know, so I am kind of like thinking about that. And that way, if you had a notification on, you'll be notified. I have discussed with you personalized medicine. I have shared with you my immediate interpretation of functional medicine. And we can uh, compare functional medicine and integrated medicine at a future broadcast. And I have shared with you, is genetic testing a scam of healthcare 2021? Absolutely not. It is medicine it is the future of medicine the future of medicine is now and it's available at a reasonable cost 
And if you take into consideration the amount of money that you've spent on over-the-counter or um, days off from work or relationships that haven't made it because of different things that have been bothering you, to me, it's definitely worth the cost because it gives you a quality of life. If you are interested in finding out a little bit more about 3X4 Genetics, feel free to reach out to me. My information is in the description box. Now, I am licensed currently in the following states, Illinois, Indiana, Montana, New York, Nevada, and California. So let's say that you are in Texas, but you are in Illinois visiting. As long as your feet are on the ground in Illinois, I could take care of you. I actually had that conversation with someone who, hey, Edwin, hey, how's it going? How are you, buddy? There's Edwin. We were just talking about him. Oh, no, you're fine, Edwin. You're you're never, you're never too late. You're awesome. Yep, definitely. So, um, yeah, hey, Edwin. So at, at, as long as your feet are on the soil, I, I had a conversation with one of my TikTok fam. Uh, we were live, like I shared with you guys earlier, and um, they were in a state I wasn't licensed. And I was like, I, I, I can't. Uh, but the reason why I would really prefer if you guys were in the state I was licensed is so that I could keep on staying in touch with you like for years and years and years. So if you do uh, reside in one of those states, feel free to contact me. And even if you don't, look, like I said, with, with regards to 3X4, that's my community. That's my family. I'll, I'll, I'll refer you to a provider who is in your state because it means more to me for you to get overall care than for it to be done by me. So even if I couldn't be a provider because I'm not licensed in the state, I, I, I could be friends with the provider and I could and they couldn't tell me any of your business because you got that HIPAA thing going on. But I could be like, hey, is everything going okay? So I, I still can like be in your, I could be one of your fans, <laughs> right? Hey guys, I always talk about this. Mr. Hartley is a, um, um, Mr. Hartley is um, a 40 year veteran public speaker. So one day, Mr. Hartley is going to give us a privilege and we're going to do a shared screen. And he's going to just let us see his talent as a speaker. And, and if you um, ever have any content that you want to share or any licenses or, oh, I'm reading Edwin's, <laughs> Edwin's license. Hold on, like, Edwin, what'd you say? Oh, uh, you know what? You, guys, look. For Christmas, put on your list a Edwin doll. Everyone needs one. Everyone needs one. <laughs> Edwin, I, I, I actually talked to my recruiter. Okay, so how do I have my licenses? And, and like I said, I try to be transparent with you guys. I do travel hospital medicine, and I have been with an amazing agency. Since I'm giving out shout outs, locum leaders, if there's any doctors out there, and if you want to have endorsement, I love locum leaders. And basically, um, I think we've been working, I've been working with them nonstop since uh, they deployed me with the COVID. And I mean, other recruiters, they contact me, I push stop. You know, you push stop so you ain't got to get their messages no more. I only mess with my recruiter, Rob Harden. Amazing. So I have been loyal, you know, good doctor, good doctor. <laughs> and so they know they know i have my virtual practice and my tiktok family i asked them what license what states do you want me to get licensed and they shouted out the states i went to my agency and they're giving me four more licenses so that that's how i you know that's how i'm getting the so the additional licenses will be georgia florida um where did i say edwin georgia florida um arizona and it's four it's four Texas, Texas. Ooh, man, my Texas fan would kill me if I had to forget that one. <laughs> Texas, Florida, Georgia, and Arizona. And my agency is getting those. And if anyone has ever gotten a medical license, it's a lot. And right now, I'm not going to ask them for anything else because I'm so humble that they're getting those licenses for me. So that's how. So 50 licenses, Edwin. Now, there is a license called a compact license which encompasses like quite a few states, but you know, one day at a time, right guys? So, but right now we'll have 10, we'll have 10 licenses within about the next six months, give or take, but we got our good six and we're good to go. So join us next Monday on TestMD TV. And I think next Monday, um, 
Mr. Hartley, what did I just say we were going to talk about? I, I could talk about the, you know, I could, listen, what I could do is I could talk about, because I like to give you guys examples, because I get tired of people saying cliche things. It's like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, Like, for example, I'm, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to run this real quick. If you have hypertension, if you have high blood pressure, and if you do a Valsalva, that actually could raise your blood pressure. So I didn't know that until I read it in my, or I may have knew it, but I just didn't put one and one together. I didn't put peanut butter with jelly and make a sandwich. Okay. But I did after reading my um, certified personal trainer. And another thing, this is when you exercise, you know how like your personal trainer may say, when you are really um, lifting the weight or going for the heaviest part of the exercise, inhale. Have you ever wondered why? Because when you inhale, that increases the amount of oxygen to the heart. So that gives you more energy to sustain that activity. And when you exhale, it blows off CO2. And, and if you exercise, if you <laughs> hyperventilate like a puppy, that while you're exercising, that will increase the risk of you being dizzy or possibly fainting because the breaths are superficial. Exercising the right way, I have never like realized how important that sentence is. So I, I, I could totally <laughs> do a video next week talking about exercise and how it, like for example, how it lowers. Okay, this is the last one. This is the last one. Last one, no more. Insulin resistance. You know, most people who have diabetes, they may start off with insulin resistance, which may eventually turn into diabetes. With an increase of exercise, it actually increases the efficiency of your body to get rid of glucose. And it decreases the resistance of insulin. And I could go in, but exercise really can do me a favor exercise and then check your sugar right after i'm gonna leave it right there if you have diabetes now i'm gonna leave it right there i'm telling you guys if you want to get off a lot of your medications exercise better be incorporated in your plan and and you will definitely get off of many medications. Uh, what do you like about, oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, what do I like about locums? I could put it in a sentence, Edwin, What I like about being a locums hospitalist is whenever you talk to your facility, they say to you, thank you for helping out as opposed to you were supposed to blah, 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 blah. I just feel appreciated. I feel like when I go to a facility, I, the facility I'm working at now, it's, it's almost like the first day I almost can't get any work done because like, oh my God, Dr. Washington, we love Dr. Washington. And then you're like, hey, how you been? What you been up to? I haven't seen you in a while. You know, let me see a picture of a kid. Cause you kind of like don't have like that stress because you don't have, you're not on those committees. You, you kind of like, you don't have a lot of the bureaucracy. Did I say that with a W? <laughs> bureaucracy. Anyway, you have a lot of the, 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 the paperwork and all the, uh, the corporate political C-suite jargon. You just get to go in, check this out. You actually just get to go in and practice medicine. Really? I love it. I love it. It's everyone has got to see. So where you from? The patients ask you where you from. You know, it's like, it's cool. I love it. Whereas like, um, I don't know, just like, um, I've never signed a contract. <laughs> I've never, but I think I did sign. I, was, I don't even consider signing a contract. I was at a hospital one time for like six months and I was like, nah, I felt, um, I just felt, uh, unappreciated how far how far have you traveled as a doctor um let me see 
I haven't left the country yet. I have had some opportunities. I got a phone call. So there are different recruiters who recruit you out of the country. Like uh, I got, I had an opportunity to go to Alaska, but yeah, I, I'm not, I'll tell you, they wanted doctors to come in from Alaska, but they wanted us to sleep in the clinic in sleeping bags for about six months. I don't even really want nobody to stay overnight. Or I don't even really like spending night on nobody's house. And then, you know, sis got to do something with her hair. You know, I can't do that. I do that. So, I mean, that, that, that wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> so, I got an opportunity to go to Alaska, Hawaii. And and that was when I had to practice. Now, look, I had to practice. Check this out, guys. I had the practice open then. And I couldn't, you know, leave my patients. But as a laptop doc doing, you know, some of the things we're doing now, I could be in Hawaii. You guys wouldn't know. You wouldn't miss me. You, I mean, you would hear the the, the luau going in the back. But besides that, you know, so I I, I could do that now, but I couldn't do that then. Uh, New Zealand, uh, and and some of these opportunities, like you have to commit to being gone for like a year, because like they're not just gonna like pay you to come back once a week, pay that airfare and everything like that. So, but no, I've only gone stateside, and the only states that I have practiced travel medicine are those six days on license. And I have used every one of my licenses. Um, so I have practiced in Illinois, Indiana, Montana, New York, Nevada, and California. Now, what I will tell you is one of the most beautiful states that I practice that was a wonderful surprise because I was like, my recruiter tricked me into this one. And when I say trick, like we were on the phone and we were just like small talking. And as you see, I talk a lot. And um, he was like, uh, I was going to say his name, but I won't. And he was like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Doc, guess what? You know, can you believe it? They got a job here in Montana. Can you believe that? And I was like, oh, really? Oh, yeah. He was like, you probably wouldn't go work in Montana, would you? I was like, no, I'd be open. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Next thing. I get a phone call from his credentialing department the next day. He has initiated a license. I was like, I didn't. And so, but let me tell you something. I have never been to a more beautiful state to practice medicine than Montana. I actually went to a rodeo. Mm -hmm, I bought cowboy. I, as you can tell from my personality, I go all in. <laughs> So I I loved taking care of people from the reservations because uh, there's a lot of Indian reservations. Um, the cowboys they really wear uh, cowboy boots and hats, and it's so cool. They're they're real they're real cowboys, rough and tough cowboys, and um and they get certain kind of sores on their feet because of the boots and certain kind of pathology on their head because of the hat. So. I think that like to practice medicine outside of where you were trained really helps to make you a rounded physician. So, I mean, I practice East Coast, West Coast, um, Midwest, uh, Indian reservations, uh, house calls, virtual. And I feel that has helped to make me a more well-rounded physician. Uh, Haver, Montana. I went to Haver and um, I went to, let me tell you, I love Haver. Oh, okay. Haver is like, um, there's no plane to go there. So um, you have to fly into, like, I've, I've got what the name of the big, and then you have to take Highway 87. So one time, cause, so Highway 87 can get snow because it gets cold. It gets, when I, when I say cold, I mean another word for the word cold, cold. But um, however, they actually had me staying at a, a house that was on the same parking lot as the hospital with a car. Look, they had you set up nice and hospitals are so nice. And um, so, but however, Montana was the first time that I had to do planes trains and automobiles because there was one time that i missed my flight and to get to Haver, you got to connect like thirty thousand million flights and if you miss one you got to miss them all 
but they needed help because that team is depending on you to come in so they can be relieved. So the only way we get there, literally, they put me on a plane, they took me to a train, they took me to a van, and then they took me to a car. I was so exhausted by the time I got there. I was like, <laughs> I need a nap. And, and, but when I got there, I did I did 10 days straight. We did 10 24 hour shifts in a row. And that was um the only hospital that I was like dock in a box because yeah, you know, with it being on boarded in family medicine at Haver, I was the pediatrician, I was the first assistant to OBGYN, I was the ICU, I was the psych, and I did adult medicine scenario. Somebody comes in having a baby. I admit her, she's an adult. I assist. First assist to the OBGYN. It's a boy. It's a girl. I flip. I'm the pediatrician. And if it's a boy, I circumcise him. And if the dad is a little bit jolted, I'm talking to him on the psych mode, like it's going to be okay. <laughs> so guess what? That was insane. And 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 that was when I was um early on out of residency. I didn't know any better. And 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 my residency program prepared me for that. I actually, uh, what, big ups, big ups. Uh, where's my white memorial? White memorial, East LA. I, man, I, I was good. I was like, what, why is everyone, you know, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Um, and yeah, that was Haver. And um, like, there was another part of, um, of uh, Montana. I can't think of the name of the town. So I won't I won't name the hospital, but I, I went there after Haver. So yep. So if you get a chance, and, and the mountains, and and those are some of the, the cleanest. It's like almost every hospital had like hardwood floors with mahogany, and they had Hoyers, and it, it man they're doing it up in Montana. Yeah, big ups to the healthcare system in Montana. Yeah, I think that's a state that doesn't have heavy tax. So if you're a healthcare provider, you want to go work at a beautiful place, get your Eskimo coat, but go to Haver, Montana. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and what, is there, what is there to do in Montana? Let me think. Um, uh, I want to say nothing. Uh, let me see. Edwin, um, let me see. Oh, I told you. You get the rodeo. Okay, there's a rodeo. That's one thing. Oh, I know. Fishing. They do that. Uh, fly fishing. Fly fishing. Everybody in Montana fly fishes. Don't ask me what it is. I'm just saying that that's what everyone does. Fly fishing. Um, there's a rodeo. Um, hiking. They're really big on hiking. Um, almost everyone has a farm and they have like those, um, what's the name of that one um, animal? It, it It's not a bull. Uh, what is it? What is it? It's not because I think it begins with a B. And um, because there was one, um, was she a nurse practitioner uh, or PA? that I work with, I miss her. And and her farm raised those. It's not, leave it in the comment guys, if you know what I'm trying to say. So it's not, um, it's not the bull. It, it begins with a B, but anyway, who they got a lot of those. <laughs> so there's a lot of animals and, um, you know, and, and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I think that, I think it's a great, great place to raise a family. I think they got some good universities there. Um, the mall, was cool. What was the name of the, the store? Um, one of those one-off credit cards that you get that you could only use if you go to a certain state. But yeah, I don't know. I like Montana. You know, I I liked. I like my hospital. And uh, yeah, so when when my when my recruiter agencies ask me, hey, where's somewhere you want to go? Because I know not many people want to go. Oh, hey, Edwin, there's um Yellowstone. Um, <laughs> it's um. Sounds fun. Um, is Montana very rural? Um, I think so. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those 
one tower. Yes, a bison. That's it. Yes. I I I couldn't think of it. I knew it began with a B. Yes. So her they had a family, not a family, but a farm full of bisons. Her and her husband raised bisons. And I wanted to see one because she was trying to describe to me the size of his head. And you know, I I loved her. I miss her. She was so smart. Listen, let me tell you something. I have mad respect for mid-levels. Um, nurse practitioners, MPA, you guys are smart. I, I love you guys. I And then so she was smart. She was so smart. I loved her. Yeah, her family raised bison. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that Montana is so much as rural, just um, maybe just small and cute, you know, just safe. Um, just a good place. Um, just a good, uh, they get, they have, um, saloons, like the ones with the doors that open. <laughs> um, I was there for a holiday and, and like, we actually, cause I was married back then. We actually went to the orthopods family's house for Thanksgiving dinner. I, so I was going to say, there's no other hospital that I had that experience, but I did have that experience in Indiana as well. Lafayette, Indiana. Those are good people down there, Lafayette, Indiana. So, but then again, I gotta tell you, you know what? I think that no matter where you go, it all depends on you. If you're good people, then good people will be there. If you're a behold, then everyone there will be beholds. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I, I've had, I've had, I've had nothing but good experiences doing tribal medicine. And um, is this mic on? Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. I would never sign a contract because. Signing a contract would mean I cannot find out about personalized medicine. I cannot find out about functional medicine. I can just decide at any moment, hey, hey, hello, Mr. Recruiter. Uh, I'm going to take off for six months. See you when I see you. And there's another doctor who actually, he's from uh, India, and he works six months, and he takes off six months. Um, so what I like about um, locums is, it actually allows me to be the kind of doctor that I want to be um, without um, not only not not only answering to, but letting someone down. If you call in sick, you're letting your teammate down. Or if you're like, I don't want to work for a month because I need leave. And if you're on staff, you're letting your team down. I didn't want to let anyone down, but I also didn't want to be under the restraints and pressure that I couldn't be the kind of doctor that I felt like would help my patients the most. So thanks to this three months I took off and it all started with an abscess. You guys have heard about my abscess. We ain't going to bring that up again. As a matter of fact, I'm still going back and forth to the dentist, which is the reason why they haven't replaced a tooth. I, I actually have a missing tooth. We're not even going to talk about that. But until he clears me, I'm off because I want to make absolutely sure I'm 100% better. So while I'm off, I figured I'd pick up a couple of additional degrees. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm a locums until I die. One thing I will say, I, I do think that uh, all the new grads that are going from being a resident on Friday and then on Monday morning, you are a locums doctor in the state that I think that's a little bit, um, I don't, I, 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 uh, I, yeah. So get a little, uh, experience under your belt because patients are complicated. It's not like it used to be. There is no, every patient has this in addition to this, in addition to this, in addition to this, on this medication, on this, on this. It's not cookie cutter. What you learned in that Robin's text textbook, know it for the boards. But it, it 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 it's it's only the cusp of what you need to know to really practice medicine, especially if you go into like there's there's certain regions in the world that have their own pathology. Like when I was in Reno, there were certain things that you know were common for Reno. When you're in New York, going back to the personalized medicine, genetic DNA, environment. Remember what I talked about? So there's a very good possibility that a patient in New York and California can have the same pathology, but it's kind of different. What is the altitude? That was something I had to deal with in Montana. 
um, Edwin, it's high. I was working out and I was running on a treadmill in Montana. I was like, oh my God, after like three minutes, I can't breathe because of the deck never altitude. I hadn't adjusted and I didn't even realize it. Now, if you have a patient at an elevated altitude that has COPD exacerbation, are you going to treat that patient the same that you would treat a patient in Louisiana or Nevada that has a lower altitude, right? So if you are just fresh out of residency and then you get thrown into a situation in Montana and then you use with the little pocket medicine thing taught you, it's going to be a little bit different, young buck. So I, I think that with travel medicine, I, 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 I kind of, I, could, I can't tell nobody what to do. I can't tell the agency what to do. But I, I just, me, myself, I, and, and the locums agency, they cover your malpractice, but I, I, I wouldn't, I would want to maybe spend about a year or two being an attending physician and then doing locums, but that's about it. Uh, there are a lot of doctors who retire from their practice and then do locums. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think the locals is a way of life. So, all right. Well, any other questions like that, guys, just feel free to put them in the comments and I'll answer. Or we, we have live sessions all the time on all my social media platforms. Uh, my description box shares all my, uh, social media handles. Feel free to follow me on social media and I'll follow you back. So if there's nothing else from my amazing co-stars, I will go ahead and adjourn this Monday night. Thank you so much for tuning in and hopefully I will see you next Monday on Test MDTV. Okay, I'm going to try to do my little um, exit here. Let's see how it goes.